What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Battle Cage. This is yet another great video breakdown. Uh, we're, today, we're looking at UFC Fight Night Luke versus Mohamed 2. And as always, we're going to have our guest joining in, uh, Law Stacks, with his best picks and predictions. And let's get right into it. What's going what's on? Going, what's going on, my brother? How How's everything? <laughs> It's all right, you know, we got robbed last week. We didn't lose, we got robbed, like I said, but it is what it is, you know, got to keep moving. Gotta absolutely, keep absolutely. Fun. Well, you know, we can't move forward until we kind of like look back. So why don't yeah. you just uh, give us a quick recap of what yeah. happened in UFC 273. I'll give my two cents on it and yeah. we're going to start the predictions. Sounds good to me. I mean, everything was going according to plan throughout the night. I, like I said, Pierre Rodriguez, she won that fight two rounds to one. She got it done for us. Uh, Rocky got it done against um, Aspen Ladd. Like I knew she would, dominated that fight, won a decision. Like I said, she would. I mean, everything was lining up until we got to the main card, <laughs> which if things went the way they kind of did go, but if they would have went a little bit different, we would have really killed the bookies yeah, and made a yeah. lot of money but i mean tisha torres won that fight like i don't care what anyone says if you know mma or watch mma there's no way you watch that fight and tell me mckenzie darren won that fight no way in hell she won round two but tisha won round one around 300 percent in my eyes and uh with jan i mean tough break they don't go your way all the time it didn't go our way this time you know he won that fight too, in my opinion. You know, I think he won the first round, fourth and the fifth, and Sterling won the second and third. But judges saw otherwise, so what can you do? It is what it is. And uh, Hamza, <laughs> good. didn't look as good as I wanted him to look. Didn't get the finish like I thought he would. Didn't run through him like I thought he would. I give Burns credit. You know, we did underestimate him a little bit, but yeah, absolutely. A lot of things still went the way I said it would and like the way I thought it would. So for the most part, it was decent night. You know, it still came up a few dollars. You know, one, nothing crazy, but at least I didn't lose anything because, you know, you always got to hedge yourself. So, but that's what I got. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of questionable calls. And if you can recall our interview, um, our, our breakdown video for UFC 273, I told you they were just... You know, a lot of polarizing positions where 73% on Tisha Torres and were kind of disrespecting Mackenzie Dern. And I said, I'm going to hedge myself out. Remember that? Do you remember yeah. that? I said, I'm going to put that one <laughs> parlay. Like, bro. No, Those judges no, no listen, I totally, again, I am not, I'm not even going to go there. Okay, we got robbed. There, there were some mm -hmm. bullshit calls. We know that, okay? But I told you, in a close fight like this, and it was a relatively close fight, I did call it. Whether you agree with me or not, there's there's room for bullshit. And I'm like, I don't want to be on the side that's going to yeah. get hit with bullshit in his face. I'm going to be on the side that at least is trying to hedge myself. So if you remember my body positions, I was like, one one parlay, it was that damn parlay that hit. Anyway, yeah. uh, but let me recap. Um, I know we didn't oh, talk. To go real quick, I want to say it one more. Yeah, thing. absolutely. Sorry. Thank God I saved myself because... Uh, when all that got busted because of this, this yawn and all that, I took Volk fourth round uh, KO <laughs> and saved my night in a big You way. listened to yeah, me because inside the distance, you listened to me. Yeah, no, no, no. Cause I, but then the way like I, I, I thought about it right before, and I'm like, you know what? Zombie's not going to – like Volk's saying he wants to finish him. He wants to make a statement. Like, you know, he, Zombie isn't Ortega. Zombie isn't uh, all these other guys that he's for Holloway recently. Like he's going to be able to finish him. And I just – had a feeling for it to me it was third or fourth and I, I was gonna go with three but then i'm like nah i'm gonna go with four i just feel it right right and he he, he should have been the third because the doc the, they should have stopped it after the third round but i got lucky and it was the fourth good good um actually i'm glad you did i don't know what made you say fourth but inside the distance <laughs> was plus 110 and no i'm sorry it, the fight doesn't go to distance was plus 110 
and the fight for inside the distance for Volkos was pl one, plus 165. What was the line for you in the fourth round? It was like uh, I I don't remember what the line was exactly, but I remember that I put 50 on it and I won 600. So whatever that Well, was okay, like plus, you can't be mad at that. 30, I think it was plus 1300 or a little wow. more. I don't remember, but wow, that's... whatever that comes out, so I put 50 and I got and I won 600. Next time so. throw the 100, right? <laughs> I know, the All right. Uh, for me, <laughs> let me just quickly say um even though we didn't kind of touch this fight, but in the back of my mind, I had that Ole Oleniak is going to win 60th okay. win. So right before the fight starts, I throw $250 on him. Um, it was plus 110. He was dog cool. money. So and I he was about to lose. Dude, I you should have seen me. I was here screaming, come on, Alexei. So as you can yeah. see, my voice is still kind of recovering. So, you know, pardon me with that. Then um, my... My dumbass decided to back Josh Framed again. I was like, let me back this guy. He gave a good yeah, account of himself. Good. Yeah, he, he gave a good account of himself. But again, yeah. um, shout out to uh, Anthony Hernandez. G great game plan. He, he was, was going to lose like in the stand-up. He, he just fought like a dog. Like right. Um, in terms of straight plays, my next straight play was... Over one and a half in Darren Weeks, Ian Gary. Courtesy to you, man. I told you. What I, I t and I told you, Ian Gary, by decision. Like, everything was... Everything I called right. hit before the main card. Wait, and let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Take, let me finish. <laughs> let me finish. So, over one and a half was, was your call, actually. I had the inside the distance, Ian Gary. You told me, I no, told go with the over or even decision. I played it a little bit safe here. Um, mm -hmm. I wish I played a safe in a later position that I'm going to touch, but mm -hmm. I took the over here. I put $260, so that was a good, really nice. good call on you. So you made me a lot of money over there. Well, decent money, right? And yeah. then I know we were kind of like flipping coins, and then I said, you know what? I'm already invested in Madsen. He's a Olympian. He's a you know silver medalist. Let me double down. So right at the beginning of the fight, I throw 400 at minus 105. And no. right after that first round, even though Pichel kind of, you know, signaled this one, yeah. the line was still minus 145 on Madsen, and I threw an additional $250. So, I, th heavy. that paid out, though. For that you. paid out. That was a good play um, because, you know, there was and something. Surprisingly, he won the third round, which no one saw that That's coming. That's Everyone why I, that's why that I jumped in because as soon as the round three starts, he takes him down, and that's yeah. it. It's it, the, the odds went to... 300 400 yeah. minus 800 so yeah, you're that, big on the live bets than me, i love really. i love the live live betting i like to I, read the I body really language and, and whatever that's why it's hard for me to give real picks out in life yeah. unless i'm streaming which i'm probably thinking yeah. of doing that in the near future maybe if you're with it we can do like a yeah. live session so that'll be awesome um and finally that one parlay hedge right it was a six pick parlay it was the over daring weeks again i replayed it it was, will the fight go to distance with Mats and Pachel? Your call, my call. It was a good call. Over and I have all my parlay pieces. Were I had the too. full distance. I took the fight go to distance at minus 165. That's the hedge bet. So I took Mackenzie Dern straight money line. No nonsense. Mm -hmm. I took Gilbert Burns versus Hamzat. The fight goes the distance at plus oh, wow. at plus 240 because I was like, yo, we, we have the under, right? So I have yeah, to hedge. That's smart. So I took I that. Would, I never saw that fight going the distance. That's what I'm saying. That. Sometimes you got to look That's at things that... I got killed on Hamza because I had everything tied to him inside the distance. Everything. Right. I wasn't Absolutely. even worried about that one. And that's Absolutely. That's what my night up for making a lot of money. Absolutely. And then um, I had the Alger over one and a half. That was an easy call. And I had the Volk, uh, Volk Korean Zombie over one and a half. My yeah, total stake, my, my total yeah. stake was fifty dollars, and my payout was one thousand one hundred fifty nine. So, nice. in retrospect, I did okay. I came out with almost eighteen units net, which is not bad. Yeah, that's, that's you know very decent. Um, but, but we had one call, and that was inside the distance for Hamzad. If that would have hit, I would have had a hundred units. Up, like 10 lot. bands bro Not 100, <laughs> but like, i would have been up like like i would have been up i would have been up 100 <laughs> units which is 10 bands for me okay no no like 20 units 25 units for me no i had like, i had a parlay payout of 10,000 no? i had 20 a, units is 20,000 no 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 100 units is 100 dollars is one unit for me 
So twenty units is yeah. two thousand. Oh yeah, no, that's two thousand. Yeah, no, that's what. That's wise. why. Yeah, it's okay for me personally. My unit, my unit. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, you're it's right. It's okay. So wait, how, how much is twenty thousand would be? Twenty thousand would be two hundred units. <laughs> two hundred units. Oh, okay. If you playing, if you're playing, if your yeah. unit is a hundred, I'm I'm assuming it is. I'm yeah, assuming, yeah, 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 I'm assuming yeah. your your unit is a hundred. Yeah, so for some yeah. people it's a dollar, for some people it's ten dollars. It's it's what your units are. My unit is one hundred dollars for one unit when I Me play too. big. So Me I'm too. that's why I know usually that's where most most yeah. like you know professionals are. So All right, anyways, let's get into this. That's it. it. What's it. done is done. Think let's move week. on. Uh, this week, I mean. Let's <laughs> look look at this weekend. Week last week to last week. That's it. Week. So. Even though you know we were we didn't get the results that we wanted, we still didn't we lose, still did and that's, right. we're, we're still, still in the good. game, right? That's it's staying afloat. So no that was kind of our intro, guys. The timestamps are in the in the description. I promise you, so you can fast forward to this actual clip. But if you stay this long, we appreciate you guys are hanging out and watching the Smash recap. So absolutely. Now let's go with this card. I'm kind of, uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna take a little bit of rain on this one. And mm -hmm. kind of like start and you basically, you know, you yeah, validate yeah. or not. So this card I have very Don't low confidence in uh, all altogether. Down. There's only like one or two fights where I really, really like. And everything else, from me personally, you're going to hear the one word and one word or only. It's going to be skipper for me personally. You may disagree and I respect your opinion. Comment down below if there's any fights that you actually are considering or you want me to maybe double take and, you know, rewatch the tape study or whatever. But with the first fight, uh, Ali Tang versus Kevin Kroom. I think Kevin Kroom is a bigger guy. You know, he's 70, he's uh, he has a 73 reach, reach versus 66. He's a much taller guy, 5'11 to 5'5. I know he's the underdog. I know he can't be trusted. But I like it. So for me, dog or mm -hmm. pass situation or a skipper, and yeah. I don't trust Halitang at all. I don't trust. I don't want to be like. I don't want to go here, but I just don't trust trust Chinese fighters in general in MMA. Mm -hmm. I think they're great martial artists, but they've just been proven. Unless you're like, what's the what's the guy? Uh, that that young phenom that just won that knocked out Morais. What's his name? Oh, Song Yudong. Song, yeah, unless a... you're one of those Song Yudong or Wei Li Zhangs of the world. I can't yeah. tr even remotely trust you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Wei Li Zheng, I called her to be the first Chinese champion. I put, like, yeah. 20, 30 units on her. So, it's not. But in general, as a group, the fighters are coming out from there. I don't really trust. So, um, yeah, very, no confidence in him, even though he's a favorite. But I'm going to go with Kevin Kroom or Pass and Skipper. As of right now, no action. Uh, yeah, for me, uh, same thing. I mean, if I were to bet on this fight, which I wouldn't because it's a dumpster dive and you can't really <laughs> cross either side, but I think Kroom is going to win as the underdog, even though he is the underdog. I just, I like that he's uh, at Glory MMA, you know, Kraus, his head coach. That's mm -hmm. who he's training under. So, you know, he's going to have a good game plan. You know, he's going to come in ready. You know, I mean, he looked pretty good against Brian Kelleher his last fight. Uh, the, he won the first round. He was abusing Keller on the feet. He was using his reach. He was looking good, you know. I liked what I saw, but then he slowed down as the fight went on, and Keller took over, won a decision. But I like that he was able to go the three rounds with such an experienced guy like Keller. And um, on the contrary, Quayle, Quayling, whatever his name is, he's not even that good. Like, um, I just don't see a big, big uh, high future for him. You know what I mean? I just don't see anything. And not that I see that from Kroon either but i just you're giving me kroon with that price tag I, I'll, I'll take the flyer on him but i'm not touching this fight absolutely really. absolutely i think that kind of um uh, speaks volumes 70 percent like i said are maybe on take a flyer on kroon inside the distance maybe but i wouldn't touch it personally okay okay i mean i i can't even fault you on that one um Let's move on, I guess. Um, like yeah. I said, for me, not, no big action, dog or pass situation. Inside the distance, you heard it from uh, Law Stacks if you want to take that stab. Um, but let's not go to the next card. Yeah, you know, let's go to the next card. The next the next, next fight, fight. <laughs> is uh, Sam Hughes, Estella Nunez. Same situation for me. Both girls yeah. can be trusted. I, don't, I think Estella Nunez kind of gives me the hedge, in my opinion. Uh, Sam Hughes is on three uh, three. Uh, three L streak here. So 
I think the better looking girl is Estella. So if you're going to market somebody, it's going to be Estella Nunez. She has the last name in, in her. She kind of did okay in her last fight against Carnalosi, who has probably the biggest biceps of women's. Mm -hmm. And she's small as shit. Like, for me, mm -hmm. hashtag goals Carnalosi <laughs> when I'm in the yeah. gym. And her shoulders are just so brolic. But anyway, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> she's crazy, bro. Somebody, please, Yosara, do something. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so so it's Estella Nunez for me or no but she's she's getting a and price tag of minus 200 i can't even remotely see myself playing a minus 200 estella nunez at best i would have probably taken a stab at minus 140 max ceiling uh but I if you touch this fight with a 10 foot pole. yeah so if that's your verdict i'm yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna say skipper for me to be honest yeah, no, this fight is... I don't even uh, <laughs> want to disrespect you guys by even breaking this fight down, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> like, just, uh, this like fight I, is when you go use the bathroom or go do whatever, walk your dog, do whatever you have to do. Do whatever like, you want to do. Like I said, uh, personally, now, some of you will disagree with us, but from, from a betting standpoint, when you have this like high uncertainty, the, the best bet is no bet and that's one of my yeah. five rules and i'm gonna stick to my five rules this week in hard body so we're moving yeah. on uh the next fight scheduled and again this is just the current fights that i'm going by topology it's wednesday things could change um you know it's mma it's still the pandemic so anything can happen but yeah. currently we have a we have, we have a late replacement relatively late replacement trey ogden uh, yeah. replacing who the hell is Zaleski, right? Zaleski would no, I'm no, sorry. No, 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 What's no, his name? Uh, uh, Martinez, I forget who, Martinez, yes, yes. Marti it's Victor Martinez something. against uh, Jordan Levitt. So yeah, looks like Martinez yeah. withdrew. Uh, Trey Ogden is coming up on a relatively, like I said, like a one week, first two week. in the UFC. The yeah, first white debutant against Jordan Levitt, aka the Monkey King. Um, yeah. To be honest, I don't really know much about Trey Ogden. I looked at some tape study. He looks okay. He looks semi all right. He is from Glory MMA um, Fitness, James which I respect James Krause. You know, I am yeah. a James Krause fan. Not Me as too. not as a fighter, but as a as a coach. No, as he was a, a good fighter too. He's, he's decent. Good. He's decent, but you know, Perfect. I mean, I got my killers, and he's not a killer. He's more into coaching now. Absolutely, I think as a coach and as a MMA mind, I respect everything he's even when he's totally wrong i want to hear him inside so yeah. i do give give that hedge here uh he is a slightly bigger man 511 to 59 uh reach is pretty much identical here like i said i'm and his record is 15 and 4 so decent record and the experience matters in mma i always say i love the experience so i can i can i can see why he's like a minus like 130 140 favorite at this point uh, but you know Jordan Levitt, he comes, he has this weird unorthodox style that just like it's hard. To, kind of. Yeah, it's hard to read read, read this guy. So for he me personally, for me personally, honestly speaking, I'm totally skipping it. I have zero read, and I'm just no. gonna either watch this guy and see what he's about, or get a cup of coffee at that point. That's just my point. That's it. I mean, uh, for me, I actually have action on this fight Ooh. already. I have. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, you're surprised, huh? I have I'm, I you, you, did you hear my on, voice? I said, ooh. <laughs> I took a stab on uh, Jordan uh, Leavitt. Um, I think he's going to win. I think he's going to find the submission. If you look at Ogden, he has four losses in his career. Three of them are by sub, right? So what does Jordan Leavitt do? Uh, he's just savage with the submissions. He, all, if you look at his record, he doesn't even have one submission that he's used twice. And every submission he's used has been a different submission. So it's not even like, he, oh, he just has a good guillotine or, oh, he just has a good rear naked choke. No, he could ankle lock you. He could, like, he could do it all on the ground. So, like, that guy will find the craziest ways to get a sub, but he'll climb your back. Um, I don't want to interrupt you. If you uh, yeah. Just give me one minute. I actually want to bring that like a like that page for our viewers to see you know so, some people may not know who trey ogden is but let me just show Bro. them for visual give me a second go ahead go three two one go ahead we're back all right so yeah like i was saying uh leave it he find a way that guy will find any way to get to your back to get your legs to get whatever he that guy is just so different when it comes to fighting he's not a conventional fighter he's not gonna try to stand there and swing and trade with you he's gonna 
his sole purpose is going to be literally to find that sub. And just because Ogden already got subbed three times, even though he has has actually more experience than Leave It, even though Leave It's the one who's been in the UFC and fought in the UFC, which is the weird part, but it's kind of scaring me a little that Ogden is under Kraus because I know he's going to have a good game plan for this fight. But, I mean, I just I Leave It being the underdog when he's already been in the UFC, fought UFC guys, fought UFC competition, even though Ogden has four more than him and i don't know I, I like leave it i have him in a few parlays but i'll probably hedge though just in case because it's a little more of a lower level fight so you can't, I can't do you think it's worth a stab confident. on the money line yeah that's what i did i because the props weren't out on points but so i just did a money line parlays and he's one of the guys i put in a couple of them but i'm gonna hedge just in case because like i said it's lower level so i don't I'm not as confident as i would be in other people but absolutely. it's a good price tag, so that's why I took a step. So yeah, mind. absolutely, absolutely. I I have to agree with you. Like I said, for me, I didn't even want to touch this fight, but now now that I know yeah. you got action on it, um, maybe I'm gonna get on board with leave it. I was leaning leave it, but again, I just yeah. I I don't like I don't like taking action on low level MMA debutants. Like you know, nothing against Trey Ogden. It's just the truth. You know what I'm saying? At least when yeah. they come out of contender series, at least I get a preview on him. Here, I don't yeah. even have a real, real preview. So for point. me, I would probably either take Jordan, leave it like dog or pass situation, another yeah. one, and that's about it. So we can move on. Yeah. All right. So our next fight. Give me a second. Is number four. Oh, this is an interesting one. We got Chris Barnett. I believe he was called the Huggy Bear, if I'm not mistaken. Now he's called um, the Beast Boy. I think that was his other name. Taking on a debutant, Martin Boudet. My personal take. I like Martin Boudet. I like what I see. The size discrepancy is crazy. Six foot four uh, to five foot nine. Let me pull it up right here. Six foot four to five foot nine. Um, you know, the age is also good. 30 years old to 35. He's in better shape because, you know, Chris Barnett is not in shape yeah. at all. Uh, and the reach, he got two. Somewhat shape if he's in the UFC, but he's not in the best shape he could possibly be in. He's not in any good shape, my man. <laughs> but I mean, he made the UFC. He's doing something. He's like, very he... athletic for his size. The di the guy does spinning wheel kicks and he's and a flips. He's like, yeah. So you're right. He is an athlete. I'm not taking away from him, but the man could do a little bit of ab crunches. But I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna take Martin Boudet. I actually am taking him as a play here. Money line minus two hundred. Uh, minus two ten. Yeah, yeah, parlay. Easy. I don't care. I'm not. I'm not throwing it as a straight play. But I'm gonna take a parlay yeah. piece and uh, combine it with my other picks that I'm gonna reveal later as the as the as the show goes on. But I like Martin Mude. I like Chris Barnett's energy. I think he's he's absolutely fantastic to watch. But he's just extremely undersized here against a real competitor. Um, you know his last opponent uh, for Chris. Barnett, the guy what, what retired right John after? Vellante, Come on, John like, Vellante retired, retired right. Who's, who was a welterweight, then went to middleweight, eventually ended up as a heavyweight because he, did, he didn't no, want to train. I think it was middleweight. middleweight. But I'm just saying, he started relatively low and then went all the way up. So yeah. I'm going to go with Marin Boudet. That's my read. And I'm probably not going to jump ship or even hedge my bet. What's your take? Yeah, no, I mean, that makes sense. I think he's going to win also. Um, yeah, not much. I'm not. I, I, I'm. I was gonna parlay him too, but then I'm like, nah. I don't trust that. I don't, I don't really like this fight. I don't want to touch it. Cause I rather watch and just enjoy it. You know, Chris Barnett is one of those type of fighters. Like he's. You know, it's gonna be a funny, fun fight. You're gonna be laughing and some crazy <laughs> stuff is gonna happen. So that's what Fair I'm gonna be doing gonna be touching it fair enough i'm with you i told you he's very his his energy is very awesome i wish him the best of luck i uh, just think he's undersized here and i'm um, 35 years old taking on a you know a, a pretty promising nine and one you know true heavyweight here this is a true heavyweight yeah. uh hands a little bit sloppy for martin boudet and for my personal liking He's but gonna wanna wrestle. he's gonna want to wrestle and then and, and do that clinch game he has so, like that dagestani wrestling you know where he tries to get your legs and hold their legs with his legs so that he could keep taking you down. But Barnett, you know, it's not going to be easy for a guy like that to get back up on his feet <laughs> if he gets taken down. So we will see. So, um, see yeah, yeah, let's, uh, I think it's fair to say we can, um, we can go, right? 
Yeah, we can go on. So that was n fight number four. Fight yeah. number five. We're doing good on time. I like that. We're flying pretty well. Uh, give me a second. The next fight is number five. We have Rafa Garcia versus Je Jesse Ronson. Interesting yeah. fight. You know, I will tell you, interesting fight. I know Jesse Ronson coming off a USADA suspension for like a serious offense. Like this is not like marijuana no, offense he said or anything. It was supplements. They, I mean, like a supplement, a tainted supplement. That, yeah. But he said that it was like he was taking the wrong supplements and it was an accident. And it, like, but that's what everyone says. But he is a sad. He had a tough break. That guy. I'll take this one from you. I'll go first. But yeah, I, I actually like Ronson. I don't think he should be the underdog. But I haven't touched yet. I might get involved. I'm thinking about it. I'll probably play it straight and I'll maybe parlay it in a few parlays also. But I don't really like Rafi Garcia. Mm -hmm. I don't like what I see from him. Like, he had a lot of hype coming in. Not like crazy hype, but, he, you know, a lot of people. It was respect. So, yeah. And uh, he looked good in his first fight against Nazareth. But, like, if you look now, Nazareth hasn't been doing too great. So that, like, loss didn't age too well, first of all. And um, I just don't like his gas thing. I feel like he's like, he give, he he fight he, he he gives it all he got. He fights hard, but like after the first round, he's always like huffing and puffing. And that loss to Chris Grudesmacher, that's a terrible loss in my opinion. And I feel like this line, the, they're just sleeping on Ronson. The dude had a tough break. He's fought some tough guys. He came into the UFC his first time. He fought uh, Francisco Trinaldo, um, Kevin Lee, and uh, I forget the third person, but uh, someone tough too, just like those other two guys. And he lost all three of them by split decision. He got cut, and then he came back to UFC. Kevin Lee, I'm sorry, Nick Kevin Lee, off. Francisco Trinaldo, and um, Michel Perez. Oh, yeah, Michel Perez. Yeah. yeah. Um, so those are three tough fights he had, and he lost them all by split decision. So that shows you he was in, in each and every one of those fights, and it was a tough fight, close fight. And then he got caught, I believe, and then his second round in the UFC, his first fight was against Dolby, which he put it on Dolby, and then this whole suspension came about after that fight. So I just feel like because of the two-year layoff, people are doubting him and sleeping on him, but I do like him in this spot, and that's more of what I see in him and also more of what I don't see and what I don't like in Rafa because I really don't think he's nothing that good. Right. Like, he's supposed to be a striker, but his striking is really nothing that special. His wrestling is okay, nothing special either. I just don't – like, he's okay everywhere. He's nothing special every, anywhere, you know, basically. So, I like Ronson, but what do you like? Can't disagree with you there. Um, the money line is at Pickham right now. Basically. Um, I think he's dropping down to the lightweight, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's yeah, going down is at 155. to 155. So that's something to consider. Um, I, you know, he fought at that weight before. He's 36 years old. Red flag coming off a coming off a suspension for steroids, supplements. Red flag. Um, he was cut in the from UFC. Red flag. I see nothing but ref like his. Gonna win the fight. <laughs> <laughs> so that shows you what you need to know about Rafa Garcia. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you. Anyway, I see so many red flags. I am taking zero dollars and zero cents on this card. This is gonna be a crapper for me. I'm gonna use this as a bathroom break. I want nothing to do with this. Um, if you like Jesse Ronson. Absolutely can't argue with that. His experience yeah, is, is crazy. Um, I, you know, at even money at this point, he started off as a as a dog. So you yeah, see, he was a plus money. So you see, the money is coming in on Ronson. There is, uh, you know, if, if I if me personally, me me, I'm taking Rafa Garcia because I like the youth. I I think he's a dog. He's Mexican, so you know he's gonna be in the fight. But because of that. Because he's Mexican, because he's younger, because he's durable, I like the over or the fight go to distance. I don't care who wins, personally. So if I'm taking... I can see Ronson finishing him, though. Mm, okay. But it might go the distance. I could see it also going the distance. It's, he probably will win by decision, but I wouldn't be surprised if he, like, clubs and subs uh, Rafa or something along those lines. Plus, Rafa gets tired and doesn't have the best gas tank, so... I don't really have a line on the distance as of yet, but like I said, if it comes out, I'm probably looking we'll at that. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Probably. Oh, yeah, on the overall? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the line uh, rapid fire. Absolutely, absolutely. So 
we're gonna we're gonna be on split decision. I mean, we're gonna be on on two different sides. Ronson yeah. for you, Rafa. Yeah. Lean, lean. Not not nothing major. And fight yeah. go to distance for me or the over. Once the line comes out, if it's obviously yeah. juiced, no. But I'm gonna take the distance if if anything. We'll talk about that. Tomorrow. Absolutely. Okay. Fight number six. We got Drakkar close. Klaus or Klaus, Klaus, I'm going to call him, versus Brandon Jenkins. Please take this Please take this one. I'm not even going to start. I mean, I'm not going to touch this fight. The line's too crazy. I mean, Drakkar Klaus, I think he should win. He will probably will win. Jenkins is a very flashy fly fighter. I think his uh, nickname is the Human Highlight Reel or something along those lines. The Human but, Highlight Reel. Yeah, he does a lot of flying knees and crazy stuff. You know, like that's how he's trying to catch you with some spinning back fist or some crazy stuff like that. But, you know, fighters like that, like it doesn't always come through for them. They might get lucky here and there with something along the way. But I just think Jakar Close is just so much better than him. His last fight was a long time ago against Benil Darius, where he had Darius hurt. But then Darius called him right back and put him out, which was it was a crazy fight. But uh, Close is coming back after that was his last fight. He was supposed to fight um, John uh, Stevens. Mm. What's, what's his first name? I forget his first name. Liverpool. Jeremy Stevens. Oh, Jeremy. He's not in the UFC anymore. And the member Stevens pushed him at the weigh in, and he got like. Oh, that was the fight. <laughs> yeah, that was Jakar Close. I remember yeah. that. That was the <laughs> fight. That was so he stupid. He pulled out of that <laughs> fight. Yeah. And, he was, but so that fight never happened. And he's been out since then. That was a year ago. So that, that's wow. Pretty much a red that was game. exactly a red. Yeah, that's. Yeah. So I'm gonna stay away from this fight. Plus, he's like minus 500. Which, like, come on, he hasn't fought in two years. How are you gonna be a minus 500? So if you want to play this, a degenerate play for this uh, fight, maybe Brandon Jenkins inside the distance or by KO. You never know. It could happen. But I can't. Uh, I can't even argue with that. <laughs> I can't. Even, I can't even argue with that. Uh, my personal take. I, I'm sorry. Are you, were you done with this fight? Yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah. My personal take. Uh, my two cents on this fight is, you know, obviously Drakkar Close is the right pick, like logically speaking, but the line is absolutely disgusting. Realm now it's minus five ninety, on someone that's thirty four years old who hasn't fought in a year, who's coming off a loss. Um, he, more than two years oh snap you right two years actually two years yeah. two he was years supposed to fight last year against yeah i'm Steve. sorry you're right I, I do apologize his last fight was two years ago to benil dariush in a fight that he was finishing on the verge of finishing uh and dariush finished. and got finished so again uh but again that you know benil is benil out. That Absolutely. Was a brutal knockout. Absolutely. So, so if uh, James catches him with a flying knee, you never know. <laughs> so no, I no my personal take, um, if I was gonna take this fight, I think the fight is gonna be Drakkar close by decision because he's a decision machine. Um I think Brandon knocked out Benil Darius. If he could knock out Ben Darius almost, I think he could knock out Jenkins too. In MMA almost doesn't count, at least for me. I don't know what you uh, think. The, the drop off in competition from Darius to Jenkins is a big drop off. Fair so point. that almost Darius turns into a yes against Brandon Jenkins. That's all I'm trying to say. Fair point. But if you think I am even thinking about parlaying a five nine and uh, under your no, close, this fight is know. a straight pass. I That's it. It's a straight pass. Heard. Me personally. <laughs> Um, I haven't made my decision, but if I am, it's probably going to be Drakkar close by, um, by, by decision, or the line should be set at all, over two and a half. Again, we'll touch that base tomorrow on your show, um, and that's pretty much it for me. I have nothing else to say. I don't care about Brenton Jenkins. I think his record is horrible. You know, he is, you know, he is the bigger guy here, but he's extremely reckless, and I don't, I don't, I don't see him winning this fight at all. Period. That's it. If he does, he does. But not, I don't see it. You never oh. know. It's MMA. MMA, baby. Uh, let's move down to the next fight. And move that up. brings us fight to numbers. We, move up. we never move down, my brother. We're moving up. <laughs> let's go. Absolutely. Only one way up. Let's go. The next fight. Uh, we have Lena Landsberg taking on Penny Ken Kienzide. And... Um, they're both from the same country. They're both from Sweden. But Landsberg, damn, she's 40 years old. This uh, fight is 
she's 40 years old the line is you know is just as disgusting as the previous one P penny kings that is minus 420 but it's kind of like I i'm okay with it to be as if you ask me in a in a in a parlay so i see myself going that route um Bro, are you crazy like come on. <laughs> like i didn't even want to even talk about this fight it just doesn't make sense don't don't throw in Bro, it's women's MMA. Look what happened to Tisha Torres last week. Let me give my two cents. I'm not going to throw minus 430 on Panny Kans out of the parlay. Hell no. But let me give my two cents, She's right? She's going to win, yeah, 100%, but not her. Hey, minus 420 in a parlay, that's a difference between, let's say, $100 and $130. That's a tank of gas. I don't know if you look. <laughs> Okay, my 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 official pick will be Penny Kanzad. Um, mostly, I think a decision. I think it's gonna go to decision. It's women's MMA, um, but again, not a super ecstatic fight for me or anything uh, anything crazy. But I'm gonna go with Penny Kanzad, and yeah, I think she's a she's part late piece. Not nothing crazy. Nothing. Don't go like balls to the wall here. Uh, anything you wanna add? I mean, uh, no, not really. This fight, uh, I, it's just like, why is this fight even on the car? Like, <laughs> like, you're you're being a little bit too crush, uh, too harsh here. But I mean, I, Kansas is gonna win. Yeah, she's gonna win. She's gonna win. Like they already <laughs> fought actually, um, like ten years ago. It was like Kansas' second fight in the UFC. Did they? Yeah, they fought, and Kansas beat her. And this was when Landsberg was like thirty. Now she's 40. So you think she's going to be Penny now? Like, that's why I say, why is this fight even on? So, so, bro, that's like an automatic parlay. No, come on. I mean, yeah, but then again, because women's MMA, that's why I don't even want to talk about it. You're right. I'm still upset about last week. <laughs> <laughs> even though I, I got two out of three with the women's MMA last week. I got I did get two out of three. I got Rocky and I got uh, uh, Rodriguez. Yeah, I love Rocky. Yeah. But I should have been three out of three. You're right. You're it right. Was it was times. a uh, T-shirt horse won that fight. Let's just be honest. And 100%. if you think anything else, you just don't know MMA. You you don't know what you were watching. So or you were watching like me with invested interest, and uh, I was watching with invested no, interest. No, that's me completely unbiased. Like, right. I, if I lose a bet, I'm I'll be the first one to admit like, oh man, I lost that bet. Like I won't try to like make excuse for it but when i get robbed that's a, that's a whole different story i'll be the first to stand up and say like yo i got robbed i didn't lose that bet i got robbed out of that bet i got Absolutely. robbed out of my pocket like <laughs> and i got robbed all right <laughs> let's change the subject i don't want you to get too overheated over here uh, no, 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 our go, next fight our next fight is gonna be devin clark I'm surprised that's not the co-main co event here. No, 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 Devin no, Clark no. versus <laughs> William Knight. Let me finish, fight. my brother. Let me finish, my brother. <laughs> this is a heavyweight fight. I know both guys are usually light heavyweights. They usually fight at 205. Looks like it's a, like a last minute, another thing going down. So they don't want to cut too much weight. So it's a, two, it's a heavyweight fight, 265. Devin Clark is the two, younger fighter by two years. Um... He fought, who did he fight? Uh, oh, he fought Smith, then he fought Ian Kudalaba. Got finished uh, uh, in the Smith fight, won the decisions with Ian Kudalaba, but took a lot of damage there. And William Knight is coming off a loss uh, to Maxim Grishin. And that was when he set a record for the biggest weight loss. I mean, for the biggest miss. weight miss ever in UC history. The guy is just... Uh, said I don't care. It's a two or five fight. I'm coming no, in at two eighteen. It was a short notice, though. It was a yeah. short notice. It was. It right. was absolutely. So I can't go. You know, I can't judge him too much. I have to give him credit where credit due. And and um, I mean, he took the fight. I mean, against Maxim Grishin. So, uh, absolutely. Um, in this particular spot, though, I like Devin Clark. You know, I know people are gonna be respecting the power of uh, William Knight, and they're gonna be like, "Yo." Give me William Knight What's by. Up with you this week, brother? Uh, Bro, I'm Devin telling you, it's Clark. it's. I think I think I got hit really hard from last week. That I'm I, I, I'm gonna give my picks, but you see me, I have almost no action here, right? I, will, I mean, with the picks you're giving me today, <laughs> I, I, I thank God you have no action. Because what are you doing, my man? Come on. You know what? I, Listen, I, you know what? Oh, you gonna be funny on Devin Clark? 
God damn, what's up with you today, my brother? <laughs> Let me breathe. Let me breathe. All right, listen. This is a very especially low comp. Uh, favorite price tag? Like, come on. I know, I I, especially with Devin Clark. Clark but but hear me out. Hear me out. Heavyweight fight, right? At heavyweight, big boys, bigger frame. I push you that against the cage. Advantage. I push you against the cage. I control the fight. Maybe score a takedown or two. Mm. Give not a physical specimen like William Knight. That dude is a specimen, bro. Specimen, but yeah, but he's, listen he's, to this. Listen to this. Jacked, the bigger he's the muscle. The, listen, the bigger the muscle, the more oxygen it requires. The yeah, longer the fight, the longer the fight, the more air it requires. The more air requires, the more energy expenditure. He's going to get tired. So I'm banking on that. I'm banking on the fact, but he is huge. He's absolutely huge. I saw his uh, training videos um, on Instagram. He looks really, really good at heavyweight, believe it or not. Um, but I'm going to go with my my pick. My pick is Devin Clark by decision. and um, But will you Knight pick would be William Knight and the finish. He's, I don't think he's going to win a decision here. Believe me. I don't no, really think that's so. That's what I'm saying. He's going to knock him out. But I'm not, that's not, this fight, I would never touch this fight. Like, I don't trust yeah. either guy. I would never put my money on either side. Like, this fight is just like, how can you trust either guy? Clark hasn't, what does he do that's good? Nothing really. He's not really good at anything, to be honest. Like, I don't even know how he made the UFC, to be honest with you. Like, and I'm not trying to, like, Bash the guy. He did make the UFC, but, like, I don't think he's that good. And William Knight, yeah, the dude is just, like, an athlete, but he's not really a great UFC fighter either. It's, so, uh, for me, I can't trust either guy, and I can't put my money on either guy. <laughs> Absolutely. But I think William Knight will knock him out. I think it favors him to be at heavyweight because, I mean, uh, he's bigger bigger than Clark. In my yeah, so. yeah, um, absolutely. I can't even front you for that. Yeah. Um, safe to say we can move on? Yeah, 100%. All right. <laughs> All right, let's really move good on. Stuff. So our next fight is going to be the first fight of the main card. We have Munir Laziz taking on a very late replacement. Uh, I'm probably going to kill his name, Anj Lusa, the last mm -hmm. ninja, 28 years old, uh, coming from Sanford MMA. And um, he's a younger fighter here. He's 28 to 24 physically you know he's 5'10 to 6'1 but it's not too crazy but he is brolic yeah. he is an absolute specimen like you said okay i'm gonna use your word specimen yeah, yeah, yeah. if you watch his last fight which which wasn't that uh long ago on the contender series yeah. right uh was it was it no was it contender? Yeah, he, oh no, he won no. after that. He, he, he fought, yeah, yeah, he, he fought won on the one week series. ago. One week ago, he just fought John right. Howard's, um, and he went one by a unanimous decision. If you yeah. take a, if you take a, 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 pictures from that fight, that man has muscles on top of muscles on top of muscles on his back. But he like he fought on the contender series before that fight. That's what I'm saying. He was on contender series. He lost. And then they he won that fight last week, and they probably called him to replace. Ah, him. you're right. He fought. Yeah, yeah. He fought Jack Della Ma Ma Madalena. Yeah, savage. he already yeah. got two wins in the UFC. You know, absolutely, Madalena. absolutely. One, so one, 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 one. Not two. One. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go here and tell you that the the right pick, the smart pick is Munir Laziz, but last minute replacement. Munir, I can't trust you. I'm sorry. You let me down. And, you know, yeah. and Angelou side, you know, he's more hungry. He's younger. He's bigger, in my opinion, like physically. Uh, but the, the the leg kicks from Munir Laziz are just beautiful to watch. And his and his uh, patience, you know, he, he can't go the distance here. Um, but, again, nothing crazy. Nothing, nothing spectacular. The official pick is Munir Laziz. No action, no confidence whatsoever, and um, yeah, that's pretty much where I stand. What about you? Uh, I mean, I'm upset that Aleski Dos Santos isn't still fighting Laziz because I had Dos Santos in a couple parlays, and I was upset that he's not because that was an easy win in my eyes for him. But um, I mean, no action for me. I don't. This fight literally just came about. Uh, if I had to, I would probably go against you and take the other side. Because I really, I liked what I saw from him on the contender series. He looks pretty good. And he fought a really tough guy, Jack de, de la Madalena, is a savage. And he's going to be 
possibly a top 15 type of guy in the UFC. I, I could see that future in him. So that was a tough fight, you know, and he, he looked all right. I mean, he lost, but I saw some things that I liked from him and I could see him pulling the upset. It just him fighting a week ago, that kind of like, oh, that's what I call him. Now. Yeah, it like, it. you know, he already cut weight. Now you got to cut weight again. I don't like that. That's kind of what's this. driving me toward that other side, to be honest. Uh, so it's a pass for me. Okay, because. fair enough. Like I said, um, my pick, Laziz, your pick, Lusa. We will talk about it next yeah. week when we break down the next card. Um, no action, though. No action whatsoever, guys. So don't don't feel contempt to play every like, every... like You can see we don't have to go here. Uh, the next fight on the main card, we have Pat Sabatini taking on TJ Laramie. Pat Sabatini is the smart pick. He should Our win. Ladies. He should win inside the distance. He should win by submission. TJ Laramie is just too young. He's too small. And, you know, yeah. nothing but respect, but I don't see him winning at all. And that's pretty much, I'm very firm on this uh, prediction. Um, yeah, that what, I don't know if he's 31 years old, Pat Sabatini, that is. He's at this prime age, man. And I have this t statistic that whenever you have um a prom prime fighter 28 to 30 and he's already established and you got a like a s young fighter they usually lose i'm just gonna go unless you're like a phenom so i mm -hmm. like pat sabatini i think the price is kind of getting ridiculous as well yeah. uh he is currently at minus, minus 420 four. that's a good parlay piece guys but i, I like the inside of distance personally um what's your take come out yet though I mean, I would uh, I, I parlayed Sabatini already. I got him a little lower earlier in the week. Um, so I actually I love Sabatini in the spot. I just think he's too much for Laramie. I I see a lot of upside in in, in um, Sabatini. I think he could possibly even be a top fifteen type of guy. He's been looking really good. Um, the way he got rocked, saw some adversity against Jamal Emmers, and then was able to find that leg lock and get that and steal that win. I love guys like that because. They're going to always fight for your money. So even though he is at this price tag and it's not the best, he's a comfortable parlay piece this week in my eyes on a card that really doesn't have that much, you know, value, to be honest. So, I mean, this is not value either, but he's a safe pick in my eyes. I just feel like he's going to come through. I would have took inside the distance, but it wasn't out yet. I don't think it still is out yet. Not but yet. Laramie is just, he's too small. Sabatini is going to be way bigger than him. I just think Laramie, he does have an advantage on the feet, but nothing. I just, I think Sabatini is going to get the fight where he needs it to be, and he's going to get it done. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. I like no arguments from my side. You, you, you saw me. Um, I kind of went past Sabatini as well. I, I love the guy. He showed nothing but grit. Has a good record. Has good age on him. He has a good fighting style, and um, he's the pick. And I got two plays. Well, I have one play officially, which is the money line uh, in a parlay, but I'm wait waiting for the inside of distance lines to come out, hopefully by tomorrow, and I'll grab that. But, um, yeah, let's move on. Our next fight, uh, <laughs> people's main event, <laughs> uh, we have M uh, Myra Bueno Silva <laughs> taking on Ooh, yeah, Yanan Woo Mulan here, okay? And... Um, I think another juiced line at this point, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Myra yeah. Bueno Silva That's minus insane. 480. Um, my odds. And it's funny because you're going to get on me now because I was getting on you, but how I was getting on you for Panny. I don't know why I did it. I just <laughs> did it for whatever reason, but I, I don't know. It's, you, it took the, you took the you took the you took the parlay piece, huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it's not a smart move. I don't. Uh, I don't advise everyone to jump on the train with me because you know she does fight stupid. She has some stupid fight IQ. I'll be honest. Like the way she was fighting Furo is like kind of like remind me of back in the day Bobby Green when he would get hit and be like, "Oh no, you didn't touch me. You didn't touch like you obviously got touched." Like wait, does she do that in the fight? Like that. She does that in the they, fight. Yeah, when oh. she was fighting Man on Fiora, her last oh. fight. Fiora would hit her with like a two piece and she'd be like nothing like you know and the <laughs> judges hate that shit you know like Bobby Green used to do that all the time like he stopped doing it as much like he still does it here and there but that's what bothers me but I just think Yanan is just so trash like 
like Silva is just like in a whole nother league. Like, and I just think she's going to be able to, the only thing I'm worried about is the volume. Cause who does put some on one, even though our punches have nothing behind them. And like, it's literally like getting hit by like a, a feather. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of crapping on her right now, but this is true. She's not UFC level, even though it's women's MMA. And, like, Killing me today. <laughs> Yo, this is going to be the it's, funniest it's true, podcast bro. ever we do. <laughs> It's the truth, bro. But I, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm not the smartest guy for putting her in a couple of parties, but I think she's gonna come through. Mind, but Fair enough. I was harping on you for Penny, and look what. Hey, 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 hey! You see how this? We see how this world works. Um, yeah. I'm with you, brother. Hey, I'm not so much garbage on this card. <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm done. I'm sorry, guys. I don't want to be one of those people that just laughs, especially coming off like painful week. But sometimes you have to laugh to brush it, it off. And painful. Don't say it was painful. We still ended up. No, but it. you know what I mean, though. Oh, Come on. I mean, money, yeah, I mean, I'm, not you, the money we're used to having. Absolutely. Pockets. Like, you know, like I said, profits are profits. It, you know, it was a good. Exactly. We had. You know, honestly, we had everything right. That that's what's that's what's sad though. That's what makes me upset. Not nah, it's like anyway. Let's not give. Like let's not, let's not go back anymore. So and next fight, next fight. We could all right, move on. Bueno Silva is gonna be the pick here from both of us. Um, our my confidence level is probably around seven point five percent. So I'm pretty okay here. Um, that's good. Seven's my lucky number. So that's so what there I you say. go. Uh, our next fight, oh, this not now we're getting there. Now we get into the juice, okay? That we're finally getting to something in this card. We mm -hmm. have uh, Andre Fialo taking on Miguel Baeza here. Um, Miguel Baeza is going to be minus 175, close to 200 favorite at this point. 29 years old, taking on Andre Fialo, who, you know, who, believe it or not, fought like a dog in his uh, debut against yeah. Michelle Pereira. So I yeah. actually liked what I saw. And before that, the man was really knocking dudes kind of out. <laughs> like, knockout James uh, he Vick. a lot of tough guys. Too. Yeah, look, knock, knockout Chris James Burgers. Vick, <laughs> ja, uh, knockout Shang Yun Yu, knockout Lincoln Pugue, whoever that is, knockout yeah. Steven Sekulic, and then anytime you see... He was in the UFC. Oh, there you go. So, um, uh, yeah, I really like in the, the integrity. James Vick was in the UFC also. Yes, he was, absolutely. Who got knocked out he by Chris Curtis, Gaethje, right? Lost. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he lost to Chris Curtis in, by third round KO. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. So it's fought some guys who's been in the UFC. No, no, no. Like I said, uh, like I said, personally speaking, I like... Uh, Andre Fiviello as a fighter, um, but I also like Miguel Baeza to be quite honest. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm I'm so torn on this fight that t the smartest thing to do, the smartest is wait for the over and under. Hopefully tomorrow we'll have know, it. Because this, if you don't <sighs> have this in MMA, it's a big problem. Wait, and so who's lacking? Who's lacking? Who's lacking? Who's lacking this? Baeza. Baeza. Just because he got knocked out by chaos. Mm. Listen, I'm not gonna sit here and talk because he's in the UFC. But like, come on, bro. Like, he doesn't have a good chin, bro. And Fialo does have some power behind him. And I don't think Baeza should. I think this fight should be more close to a pick him, honestly. So that's why I'm gonna lean Fialo. I would. I really could see him knocking Baeza out mm. because of Baeza's chin issues. In my opinion, I don't know. That's just my opinion, and I believe a lot of other people's opinions too. But I don't know. I don't. Baez is really like he was supposed to be really good. Like he had a little bit of hype behind him when he was coming to UFC, I believe, and he really hasn't lived up to it that much. You know what I mean? I just, yeah, absolutely. I would take the flyer on Fiala, in my opinion, but I'm not. I haven't touched it. I don't think I will. I'd rather just pass on a fight like this. You know. To be honest. Yeah. Um. Personally speaking, like I said, I I have nothing but respect for this uh fighter Andre Fialo. Uh, but again, I just maybe it's the inner fanboy in me because I, you know, I used to be a big yeah, Miguel Baez. And, and, and remember what we said: no more fanboy bullshit. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. so let's take that out of the equation. So I mean, uh, Fialo is a good lean here. I think Miguel Baez is live for a comeback here as well. That's why he's getting the respect. He's very athletic. You know, um, he has he has the tools to be honest. You know, he's he's at MMA Masters, so you know he's he's in a really really good gym. Like that's a good gym, believe it or not. I believe he got Colby in there. So yeah, Colby's uh, not 
Uh, Kobe's good though. Well, come on, I don't care what anybody says. He's Kobe, good, but he's not training with him. Kobe, you know, he does. You're right. Yeah, Kobe trains by himself. But anyway, at least the coaches are there, right? You know, they could give him the good. Uh, They're thing. right. They don't have that. But many Sanford guys. MMA is just as good. I love Sanford MMA. Yeah. So, uh, I, to me, I think the best thing to do, like I said, is maybe wait for the over under tomorrow. We can talk about it, and um, yeah. and maybe see if we can have a gauge here. But the yeah. the knockout is live for Andre Fialo, absolutely. Like I said, before his debut to MMA uh, to uh, UFC, he knocked out four people straight. Knockout, knockout, knockout. Yeah, knockout. Yeah. So he has the power. He's gonna be in good shape. You know the man is hungry. He's from Portugal. He and wants the a win. Fight isn't on short notice. It's like not on a short notice. You know he wants this win. And you know and uh, yeah, I just what what do you want me to say? I'm gonna go. I'm. I think it's a good dog pick, but I don't have an official side yet. Okay, I have maybe tomorrow. I I'll tell you a side, but yeah. I like the over under here, which you know we'll we'll see tomorrow as well uh, on yeah. your show. Um, safe to say we can move on. Yeah, for sure. All right, perfect. We are now in the co-main event, and nobody knows who these two people are in the co-main no, event. Stop, stop. Uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> anyway, well, uh, do you want to try pronouncing these names? or do yeah, you, do you Kai Borello versus Doug. No, I can't pronounce this. Okay, can't. good. So we have Kai Borello taking on Gadzi Omar Gadzivich. Or Gadzivich. Omar Gadzivich. Oh, wait, maybe that's it. Omar Gadzayev? If you don't know who these guys are, I'll take over. Dude, this, I right? have no idea who these guys are. Please. The, shame the, on the, you. Shame on you. Listen, the mic is yours. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, they're both debutants, which is weird because usually you don't see two guys coming off the Contender Series that are going to fight each other in their UFC debut. So that's something different. We don't really see a lot of the times. But... uh yeah, I mean, they both, uh, Borello, he's been on uh, the Contend Series twice, actually. The first time, he won by decision, but didn't get a contract. So then he went, came back, and then he, his second fight, he knocked the dude out or whatever in the first round, got the contract the second time. Godzi got the contract his only time. He was only on Contender Series one time. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Godzi's more of a wrestler. He's going to try to take it to the ground. He's going to try to... Um, get the fight where he wants it but Borello he's really really good uh he he's good everywhere honestly he has good stand up he's uh he's pretty good on the ground too he's not really a wrestler heavy like Gazi is but he's more looking to strike stuff like that but um it's a really close fight it's hard to get a the best read just because these guys it is their first times fighting in the UFC so we haven't seen them as much as we see other guys but if I had to go towards one direction i'm probably going to be going with borello just because of the price tag and i do think he can even if he gets taken down i could see his get up game being good and get him back up and i feel like he is i, I just like i don't know what it is about him i really like what i see and i think he's going to keep improving keep getting better he's young uh he has time and i think he already got a lot of great skills that he could use as the base and just keep improving other areas in his game and i could see a pretty good future for the kid i could see a good future for godzi too but I, i'm gonna lean borello just because the price tag and we get him as an underdog so that's my lean. um dude you took everything just everything <laughs> i was gonna say um, you you weren't gonna say anything you i was gonna say no no let me let me listen I, I didn't know who the who, who these guys were to be honest <laughs> i'll be honest uh but i did some digging okay i did some digging and mm -hmm. um, I don't know what it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm That's gonna say I'm quoting you. you okay. Your you went and got your shovel. I, yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but I'm, 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 I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna steal your words. I don't know what it is. I have a feeling on uh, Kai Borello. I can't put it. Maybe it's his tattoo on his neck that says <laughs> "Free Spirit." Uh, <laughs> it, maybe it's the fact that he's Brazilian and he's 10-1. Maybe it's the fact that, you know, everybody's going to think, oh, this Russian here, another Habibi type of guy, you know. Yeah. I just don't know, to be honest. The odds are, you know, they they gave the more respect to the Russian. I believe the the underdog Kai Borello oh, opened up at like plus 140. It's been diluted now uh, to even plus 120. I wouldn't be surprised that this by fight is pick em. Something tells me this it's going to be a banger, though. I like this fight. Yes. It's definitely a way better fight. I, absolutely. I think this is one of the better fights. 
uh, on the card. Seventy-one percent is, is on the Young Russian. Regard. So perfect, perfect, perfect place to go against the Russian here, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not entirely sold on him. I think he got the goods though. Thirteen, you know, undefeated. There's, I know some, you know, some really good uh, cappers. You know, they love this guy Godzi. Uh, but there's also good cappers like us who like Kai Borello. So go figure. I think there's no there's no, no really strong, though. no strong. Indeed. Yeah, no, no. It's not like everybody's throwing hammers or 20, 30 units in this fight. No one's doing that, right? I, at least I don't know. Um, mm. For me, my my official pick will be a slight lean on Kai Borello. I do not have a current play on him at the moment. I think I need another day or so to really finalize. Maybe tomorrow on your podcast. Um, on the round line rapid fire, I can make an official pick. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna I'm gonna expect a really good fight. Um, you know, from both of these guys, someone like for example Kai, who was you know on contender series once and then he came back again. I think there's a story to it. There's you know it's something that we can relate. So I'm gonna go with Kai. Not hundred percent fully confident, but. As of right now, leaning there, not an official pick, not an official play. Again, I do want to see all the lines come out, hopefully by tomorrow. Um, and that's pretty much on this fight. Are we good? Yeah, yeah. Let's we are go good. To so we main. made it, man. We're at the main event. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you start this dance really yeah. quick. We have Vicente Luque taking on Bilal Muhammad. Uh, this is a rematch, so they fought before. In the very first fight, uh, Vicente Luque absolutely murdered Bilal Muhammad, knocked him out cold in the first round. Uh, 33 years old for Bilal, 34 Vicente Luque. Vicente Luque is almost at 2-1 to one odds right now. He's close to minus 200 on some books. Bilal plus 145. Uh, in terms of physicality, they're, you know, size-wise, they're the same, but the reach for Five-inch reach advantage, which is very significant for this silent assassin, Vicente Luque. And I'm going to let you go ahead and I'll get it started. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I really like Vicente Luque in this spot. It, like, the last couple of days, though, I've been thinking, and I, I'm not going to underestimate Bilal Muhammad. I think he's made a lot of improvements since earlier in his career. Um, he's he, he's a smart fighter. He's going to come in here with a good game plan. He's going to be trying to take Vincente down. Uh, he's going to keep rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, take down, get up, take down, get up, take down. Luque, you know him. He's going to entertain the fight anywhere it goes. He's dangerous everywhere. The dude's hands are just phenomenal. Uh, his grappling is really good and underrated, as we, he showed in his last fight against Michael Chiesa. At, at one point in that fight, it was looking like Chiesa was going to wrap up that neck and uh, take that W, but Luke just kept fighting. He persisted, and he ended up with the Darsh choke. That was, that was a good comeback win. It didn't look good for him in that fight at, at one point. I just love Vicente. I'm, he's one of my favorite fighters, honestly. The dude is just everyone's favorite fighter. Yeah, you gotta love him. Yeah, the dude is just a savage. He puts on a show. He's like, what's his like? Every win is a finish. I don't. Has he even ever won by decision? Maybe um, won. let me check. That's a good question. Let me take a I look. I think he's. I think he has like two decision wins in his career. So out of his twenty-one wins, so I'm gonna pull it up for the for our viewers to see. Out of twenty-one wins, wait, twenty-one or twenty-two? It's a little discrepancy. Anyway, like 20-something wins, he has... Go by ESPN. I always go by ESPN. Uh, let me see. You're right. Let me look at ESPN. So, per ESPN, his record... I don't even... Oh, 21. Okay, so 21 fights um, for Vicente Luque. And out of those fights... 21 me... fights or 21 wins? 21 wins. I'm, I'm sorry. He had a lot more fights. It's 21-7. So... Uh, no, 21-7-1. Okay, so that's 29 fights. That's a lot of fights. Yeah. That's very good. Um, and out of those, he has 11 knockouts, 9 submissions, and only 2 decisions. His last win, Wait, no, his last wins. decision win. Knockouts, 9 subs, that's 20. Yeah. One decision win then. 11, 11 knockouts, 9, nine so, subs, that's, that's 20. 20. And two one, decisions. Two. Maybe, oh, maybe, I don't know where that, like I said, there's a discrepancy. I don't know why there's a discrepancy. Anyway, who cares, yes, right? 21 wins, but 20, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, I'm just looking at the, uh, I'm looking at the, what is it called? Topology. What, what, don't get mad at me. No, ESPN, <laughs> I'm saying. Like, oh, ESPN? All right. 
No, How according to, have, according to twenty one wins and then have eleven knockouts, nine subs, and two decisions, that equals twenty two. Hey, wins. write an email to Topology, okay? <laughs> no, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, right, whatever. But uh, you can see he is a finisher. That's the basically what we were talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, he is a finisher. Um, but yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Before we got no, you're that. good. I just uh, yeah, the dude is just puts on the show every fight. Um. He, even when he looks like he's out of the fight, he'll find a way to knock you out or submit you or just he'll find a way. And at five-round fight, I'm going to favor Luke. I think he's going to find the finish. It might not be as early as the first fight. Bilal's going to be tough. The dude is – he's a tough fight, you know. Like, he, he, he's going to – he's going to want to wrestle the whole fight, in my opinion. He can't stand it. He can't stand with Luke. Luke is going to find that knockout real quick like he did in the first fight if Bilal tries to stand with him. But oh, I, think, I, I lost your video for a second. Okay, good. We're good? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, so Bilal, you know, he's a tough test, but I just think Luke is going to find that chin. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if he subs him either, honestly. I would go Luke inside the distance. I'm going to be on that this week, probably. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, though, if he somehow finds a way to win a decision. But like I said, he doesn't win decisions. The guy finds a way to get that finish. So I'm going to be – I have Luke already in a bunch of parlays. I'm going to throw him by finish also and by – uh by finish and yeah that's what i'm gonna be riding with okay um i agree 100 <laughs> yeah. i can't i can't even say anything like i'm i i am a Bilal muhammad fan i follow him on instagram i took, Insta I took him Thompson. heavy heavy Thompson. heavy if you remember like yeah. units you unloading. were telling me remember the name after the fight i said remember the name remember the <laughs> name um but it's you know it, that's why I hate being in this spot because I like both guys a lot, yeah. um, but I think the killer the killer ability is is with Vicente Luque. He finished him the first time. I know they're not the same fighters from 2016. I know they've been, you know, developing and and Bilal is in a crazy crazy streak here. Uh, you know, Luque Bilal. Too, both on yeah, no, streak. they are of course. That's what I'm saying. Um, just a couple of things, right? Number one. It is the month of Ramadan, so I don't know. Is Bilal Muhammad fasting? Because I, I that's a good, that's a good point, bro. Actually. I, I DM'd him, no response. I commented on his, on his, uh, you know, like videos, like because yeah. no response. Usually he responds. Believe it or not, he's a cringy kind of, he's a troll guy, yeah. you know. So no response, but it's very important because if I know he's fasting. He's definitely gonna lose this fight. I'm telling you right now. I mean, that's not a hundred percent because look at. Kyrie yesterday on the Brooklyn Nets, the dude's fasting, and he dropped like 35 and won the game for the Nets yesterday. So you can't say that. But let me say that. Let me say something. Day and night, because in basketball, you can't fast the whole day, then hydrate. It's a different sport. That's true. That's but true. here, it's, it's a fight, man. You, If you're not training yeah. physically, you, tr I'm fasting. Well, he's training. He's just not eating. It's but that's what I'm saying. That takes... Do you know yeah, how no, heavy it is? True. I went to the gym today. That's a good point. That's I went to the point. gym today on a fasted state at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I was dying by, by 11.30. Dying. Yeah. I'm telling you. And I did 20% of yeah, what I... I'm a professional athlete. <laughs> I know, but I've been trained for a long time, my brother. I'm just giving you, I'm uh, extrapolating data here, okay? I'm not comparing myself to Bilal Muhammad yeah, by course. no means, okay? But I'm just saying, if he's fasting, he's that definitely he, losing the remember fight. Remember the name. Remember man. the name. But if, if he's not fasting, you know, then he, he's in a good position, to be honest. Um, you know his game plan, take down, control, yeah. take down, control. That's pretty much yeah. it. But you going against Brazilian BJJ, who's an assassin, who can yeah, come the out. Silent assassin. Uh, the silent assassin. He was in such a predicament against um, uh, Michael yeah, Chiesa, yeah. where he, that choke was really there, very heavy. He was able to weather this. It was going to be there, but he got it. It was dangerous yeah. spot. It was a dangerous spot, but he yeah, was able. He was too hungry. He, yeah, he. he I think. It. I think. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's the key. He rushed it. He and he got reckless. And Vicente just showed that he's he's a better fighter than uh, Kiesa, and he capitalized and he finished that fight. All of, like I said, we're, he's a he's a finisher. He's been finishing the last fights. His last loss is to Stephen Thompson, and that's two years ago. And that's an early version of like. Stephen Thompson, not the not the last version of Stephen Thompson. So you know he's a dangerous fighter, Steve Stephen but Thompson. But Bilal dominated him. I'm not gonna lie, Bilal didn't like nobody else ever did him. So that's the one thing that does scare me. Right. But 
I don't see Vicente losing. This is his opportunity. He's been working his whole life for. I mean, Bilal too. I can't say I could say the same for Bilal, but like you know, the winner of this is probably. I mean, it's this division is stacked right now. Oh my God! You got Leon Edwards who's about to get the title shot. You Hamzad. got Hamzad threatening for the title shot. You got the winner of this who arguably deserves a title shot as 100%. well. Like, <laughs> this division is stacked. And, and Kamara Usman is giving rematches to uh, what's his oh, name, Jorge God. Masvidal. Come on, bro! This is the real fight to make, okay? Um, I mean, it was only because it was a money making. You're right; fight. it was a money fight. I it's, I can't even blame Kamara. Usman Smart didn't man. get the draws like other guys. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that's what it is. Yeah, Luke for me too. I love Luke. Nah. Like I said, I'm a Bilal yeah. fan. I wa I follow him on Instagram, interact, I freaking watch his stupid videos. Uh, but Luke is just to me is just a complete fighter, man. He's a fighter, you know. Yeah. He's not gonna be going Bilal's out there. But he doesn't have that finishing ability he does and have finishing, yeah, yeah. So yeah. To if me, this fight goes to decision, Bilal's probably gonna win. If this fight gets finished, then Luke is Luke, bro. Win. Luke is good, but in this time around, I have a feeling it's going over two and a half. That's my call. I mean official. I don't know. With Luke, I don't I, know the I, line. The line is not there. The official call from me. From I me. wouldn't be comfortable playing that only because of Luke, because that dude could take you out. I am gonna I'm gonna roll the dice here and say give me over two and a half if it's a decent line. We'll I talk think about it more tomorrow, right the, right. So let's not go get ahead of ourselves. The the side that I want to back is gonna be with Vicente Luque. I think he's a good fighter. I think he's a finisher. Uh, and I love getting a pretty good tag. I didn't think he would be this good of a price tag. To be honest, before the lines came out on this fight, I thought he was gonna be like minus two twenty or higher. So when I seen that minus like one sixty five, one seventy, I yeah. was like, wow. You know what James Krause said? Uh, was I was watching one of his shows. Um, he took Bilal, yeah. He took Bilal, and he and he believes He's he should getting... be the favorite. Yeah, but you funny. know what? It's the same James right. Krause who, who said Gilbert Burns is good value plus four hundred. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, they, I mean, it was good value if you think about because it, it was a closer fight than we right. thought. But yeah, we, we know, know. We, we really know. know. Um, yeah. So I think we're we're in the same side here. Vicente Luque for us. Uh, the public uh, the public has eighty percent on Vicente Luque, which is scaring to me. I don't like that. Believe me or not. Uh, I don't like. No, Bilal's getting some love recently. Though. Yeah, Bilal is getting love, uh, and you know, rightfully so. I, I, like I said, I respect Bilal. He's a, he's a hard worker. He's been training this entire, the whole, the whole four months. So love him there. Um, but like I said, my biggest thing is, is if, is if he's fasting, he's at a big disadvantage. If he's not fasting. Then he uh, he's good, but if he's fasting, I'm telling you right now. It's even though, long. even though we're only like maybe 12 days into fasting, that's a long time. So, cause I'm already feeling it. I I broke my fast with like water, and then I'm starving right now. So I gotta go eat after this. But again, Me too. Uh, Bilal um, Bilal has a good chance. He's a we give we're giving him the respect. He deserves it. But Vicente Luque is the pick for us uh, yes. together, right? I think we're unanimous on this one. And that kind of wraps up the card. Any last minute things you want to say before we wrap just, it up? Just smash that like, hit that subscribe button, show some love. I'm gonna keep getting bigger and bigger, better and better. That's just how it is, and let's kill it. I mean, last week went pretty good for the most part. Just a few things we got robbed on, but this week we were we, right on. We were right on every call. We were right on everything pretty much for the most part. And that's how it's always gonna be. Because like I said, nine out of ten times. We're going to call what's going to happen. There's going to be that one out of ten times we get robbed yeah. or some crazy nonsense happens. But it is what it is. Let's Listen, it. I Let's took your picks. You it. saw that. You gave me Ian Gary yeah. by decision. You gave yeah. me the over. You gave me Rocky. Yeah. You gave me the fight yeah. go to distance. Um, Piera, you were on you, Hanson. You told, I was on Hanson. You told me Piera. I saved my ass by by hedging on Piera. Um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, so, I was telling you. Yeah, you told me. You you told me. I didn't listen to you. That's one place where I didn't listen to you, and I hate myself that I didn't listen to you. Like, don't go heavy on Josh Fram. But besides that, you you were right on everything. My calls were solid. I think I think I got almost ninety percent right, and my hedge bet, as you can see, fifty dollars for eleven hundred, which was great. My my crazy last minute play on Matson was good. I decided to stay there. But yeah, everything else was good. So. That was last week, so let's see. Well, let's what let's see what happens this week. Uh, this week Not I'm very reserved. Though. I'm gonna tell you right now, 
I'm very reserved. My total budget for this one, for anyone watching, is two units. That means I'm playing with $200, and that's it. No live bets for me this this week. Promise you. No, for me, it will be more than that, but not nothing too crazy. Nothing like last week. Right, uh, right, right, right. Um, I, I was going to do a bonus round for Bellator. I think we kind of went too far. Maybe tomorrow we can reserve it. Tomorrow, yeah. yeah, let's reserve it for tomorrow on your uh, show. Round line, yeah. rapid fire, guys. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe because tomorrow uh, Lost Tax drops his over-unders yeah. on the round line, rapid fire. I will be his co-host. He's going to be leading the entire show. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Um, looking yes, for sir. everyone joining us tomorrow. And... um. Great show. Love it. Thank you so much for your time. And um, that's it for me. Leave a comment. How <laughs> do you go? Leave a comment. Let's go, guys. Appreciate it. I'm gonna I'm signing out. Peace. Let's get it.